I have known Thomas for 18 years. He was a strange person. He was very staid. He always wanted to prove everything. He made no decisions unless he had someone prove it to him often and again and again. But I loved him. I was probably his best friend. And it's a good thing because he didn't have many. I had heard about his following this Jesus. And I had wondered what was going to happen to my friend who I grew up with, who I knew. We had heard all about this Jesus, this miracle worker. We'd heard about healings. We'd heard that he had fed 5,000. We heard about people who had been blind and were given sight. And then there was my great friend Thomas. He followed Jesus. He loved him, but he was cautious. When he came back to town, I, of course, was curious as to what happened. He had been gone many years, did not know where he went. He didn't say exactly where he went. We were curious. So I asked, Thomas, what happened? What happened after Jesus' crucifixion? Why did you leave so quickly? And he said, He called me Mally. I'm Malachi, but he called me Mally. Do you really want to know what happened? I do. He said, I've got to back up just a bit and let you know what the disciples told me because I was not with them on that night. They were afraid. They were afraid that the Romans would get them also, that they would be crucified for following this Jesus, this radical. I was not with them. I didn't want to be with them. I was in chaos because I had lost the Lord of my life. And I knew he was dead. And what was ever said about him being seen, I didn't believe. I was not with them. Apparently, they say that they had locked every door they could. But even with that barricade, Jesus moved into the midst of them, uninvited, unexpected. They were fearful. And he said something that calmed them immediately. Peace be with you. And as you and I know, Mally, when the word peace is said in Aramaic, It's not just a word, it's an energy. It's a way of of saying peace to you and all that is around you that penetrates you. And it calmed them for just a bit. And then he said something that was so strange to them, he said. Jesus said, look at my hands and my side. Look at the wounds. And they were awestruck. They knew that this Jesus who they had seen crucified was alive. He then said again, peace be with you. And then he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. They were stunned. This is our Lord, our risen Lord, saying to us, we are being given the Holy Spirit, the Spirit that he had talked about on so many occasions. The Spirit who would be the advocate. The Spirit who would be inside us and and lead us into truth and into grace and enable us to love as we were never before able to love. He said, receive the Holy Spirit and moved right into something they said was totally confusing. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. But if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. They didn't understand. They understood the peace. They understood his hands and understood his wounds. And they said, spreading the word to me, we have seen the Lord. And he told me, 
he was cautious, not quite sure, even with all of that. And Thomas said that later. He got enough courage to go and be with the rest of the disciples. And there in the midst of them, not really wondering what was going to happen, he just knew that he was there present with those disciples who said, the Lord is risen, we have seen him. Jesus appeared right there and said, peace be with you. But without any other explanation, he looked straight at me, Thomas said. And those eyes seared into my soul. They seared into my heart because his silence worked through all of my chaos. And there I was with this Jesus. Peace be with you. And as if he knew exactly what was on my mind and exactly what I was in such fear of and wrestling so much with, he looked at me and he said, Thomas, put your hand here. Put your hand in my side. I don't know how he knew that I wanted that. I don't know how he knew that was the thing that was going to convince me that he was alive. But he said it to me, and the doubt faded away. The chaos which had built dissolved. And I got close, and I put my hand in his side. And I knew, I knew, deep within my being, in my heart, in my soul, in my mind, that this Jesus who they had talked about, who we had followed, who was dead, I know he was dead, was alive. And when he said, touch me, I knew that he was saying, more than just my wounds prove to you that I am alive. The wounds represented, I knew, everything the world had done to him. All of the hate put on him, all of the fear, all of the rejection, all of the betrayal was cast onto him, and he was standing there as, well, Thomas said, a risen wound a wound that was real, a wound that allowed me to share my wounds, to share the chaos of my life, that allowed me to, to give to Him all that I was because His words, His action, His body, His wounds there with me calmed the chaos. Peace, He said to me. And Mally, you know, that when peace is used, it's not simply a word that means happiness or joy or a cessation of hostility with both sides at a standoff. It means an eradication of even the will and the means to attack. And I understood for the first time that peace from our Lord penetrated us. And every one of us who have received that spirit. And I told Mally, I said, if you want this in your life, hang on. And Mally, I asked, what do I do? He said, take those wounds that you've got and put them in my side. Take the sorrow that you've been carrying for all of these years and thrust them into me. Take that confusion that, with which you look at the world and can't figure out what's going on. Take your weariness that has knocked all of us down. Mally? If you want this 
peace. And if you want this forgiveness, touch the wounds of all who are around you. And he said, Mally, when you touch them, I am touching them. My wounds become their healing. My life becomes their life. And it made sense for the first time in my life, Mally, when he said that, because I could think back to what the disciples said that Jesus said, that he was in the Father, and the Father was in him, and that he was in them. Mally, if you want this risen life, touch, forgive, drop the will to hurt, and see all of those around you, all of whom have taken their hands in their wounds and placed them in the side of that risen Christ. And Mally, you'll never be the same.